thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. This is the second video for the topic of communication systems and in this video we learn about amplitude modulation of waves. This is generally done for low frequencies and is abbreviated by AM waves and low frequencies are converted to high frequencies because it's generally easier and more efficient to transmit waves that are high in frequency as opposed to low in frequency. So let's look at why that is uh, for a minute. There are three major reasons why we prefer to transmit waves of high frequency over low frequency. The first is the size of the antenna. Or sometimes it's also called the aerial. So we saw last time that when you're transmitting something using an antenna or aerial, the general length of it should be of the order of the wavelength of the uh, wave. Generally, what is the minimum length needed is lambda by 4. It needs to be at least lambda by 4 if lambda is the wavelength of the wave being transmitted. So smaller frequencies mean larger wavelengths. And if you have a frequency of, let's say, 20 kilohertz, which is quite a large frequency, that's the upper limit of the frequency that humans can hear, even for that you would need a wavelength of around 50 kilo 15 kilometers. And it's obviously not practical to have an antenna that is 15 kilometers high, so we need to figure out some way in which we can have smaller antennas. So if we convert this 20 kilohertz frequency into a very high frequency, then the lambda or the wavelength would be smaller and you would need a smaller um, size antenna maybe of about a couple of meters or so. So this is the first reason why you need to convert frequ low frequencies into high frequencies before transmitting them because the size of the antenna is a consideration. Another reason is power radiated by the antenna. Now we've already learned about attenuation in which the intensity or the amplitude of waves decreases as time passes as they travel longer and longer distances in space. So we obviously need a high power radiated by the antenna so that the range of the communication can be longer. And the power radiated it can be proved is proportional to L by lambda whole squared where L is the length of the antenna as and lambda is the wavelength. So again we see the smaller the wavelength the more power will be radiated and hence the range will be longer because it will be able to travel larger distances up before diminishing in magnitude. So this also favors small wavelength which means larger frequency. And the third and the final reason is due to mixing up of signals from different transmitters. Now when you increase the frequency, not only is the actual number increased, but the bandwidth is increased as well. For example, if you have 10 different frequencies, uh, 10 different transmitters, all of them operating between 5 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz, even if one of them is between 5 to 6, the other is between 5.5 .5 to 6.5, they will overlap and it will create a lot of problems. So we can actually modulate them to different extents. For example, the first one, we could actually modulate it to be let's say between 500 kilohertz and 550 kilohertz. The next one which would be 5.5 to 6 or something we could modulate to 600 kilohertz to 700 kilohertz. So the larger the wavelength the larger the spread in wavelength there can be and the lower chances there are of waves overlapping over each other in terms of the frequency spectrum. You have a wider range in which you can divide a certain number of frequencies as opposed to between 5 and 10. Here you have to divide all frequencies between this range into a bandwidth of 5000 kilohertz. Whereas if you make it 10 times or 100 times you can actually divide it into frequencies of 50 kilohertz or even 500 kilohertz. In which case you could actually get clearer signals because they would be less overlapping between signals from different transmitters. So these are the reasons we need to modulate low frequency waves into high frequency waves before we transmit them. Now let's look at the mathematic of how, mathematics of how it happens. 
the modulated the standard modulated message signal unmodulated message signal rather is often referred to as m of t and let's assume that is am sine of omega mt we'll assume for simplicity that the phase is zero or that this start at t is equal to zero from value equal to zero in this case obviously the actual frequency would obey the relation omega m is equal to 2 pi mu m where mu m is the frequency omega m is the angular frequency let the ca this is the message signal and let's have the carrier wave C of t be represented again by AC sine of omega c t with omega c is equal to 2 pi mu c and of course mu c has to be much much greater than mu m that is the whole purpose of modulation in the first place. So when you modulate this signal the net modulated signal referred to as CMT can be written as AC plus AM sine omega m t times sine omega c t why this particular structure you shouldn't really be concerned with you just increase the amplitude by a certain amount to increase the average value and then you multiply it by the sinusoidal factor to make it a sinusoidal wave so in that case you can actually simplify it and write it as a c sine omega c t plus a m sine omega m t sine omega c t but it is generally more commonly written as the standard carrier wave ac sine omega c t plus mu which is a constant times ac sine omega m t sine omega c t where you can see that mu is equal to am by ac and is generally referred to as the modulation index it's generally kept less than equal to one to avoid distortion otherwise you could not even be able to recognize the new signal from the original signal so using the standard trigonometric relation uh, 2 sin a sin b I'm sure you've learned these in maths is equal to cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b we can write cmt remember cmt is not the carrier wave that was c of t this is the modulated signal and it can be written as ac sine of omega c t plus mu a c by 2 cos of omega c minus omega m t minus mu a c by 2 so the bracket should be here cos of omega c plus omega m t so what we've done is we took one wave which had a frequency of omega m let's see it on a graph let's say this would be omega m remember we're talking about angular frequencies but when we talk about hertz it's frequencies and they have a factor of 2 pi between them then now we have a much greater frequency omega c but that's not the only frequency there are three separate components ac omega c t which has a frequency of omega c then you have mu ac by 2 cos of omega c minus omega m t which has a frequency of omega c minus omega m and a frequency of omega c plus omega m these two frequency are respectively called the lower side frequency and the upper side frequency so we see now, now that instead of a single discrete frequency we actually have a spread in frequencies we have three separate frequencies which are separated by a distance of 2 omega m by a frequency bandwidth of 2 omega m so 2 omega m now is the bandwidth of this modulated signal 
of course the ratio a m by a c or the modulation index actually can be given by the peak voltages remember whenever we talk about a uh, electric signal it's it's either current or voltage with respect to time we've already seen this stuff before this is called the peak voltage or peak current and that would be a m so let's say you have a message signal of frequency 10 kilohertz and peak voltage 10 volts in that case am would be 10 volts it could be in terms of current as well but generally we look at these in terms of voltages now once you've modulated this you've converted a low frequency into a high frequency so that you can send it through the channel through large distances the next step is to demodulate it or to convert the high frequency back into the lower frequency and then you convert it through the receiver to the information signal now this is a point where sometimes students mix it up so remember there are two separate aspects there is demodulation and then there is conversion from the message signal to what we were trying to send which was the information signal So let's say I'm talking on the phone to somebody. The pressure waves created by my sound are converted into electrical signals first. And those electrical signals are finally taken from a low frequency to a high frequency by modulation. Then you have demodulation in which that high frequency is brought back to the low frequency. And that low frequency is finally converted back into pressure waves with the help of an electronic device called a speaker so that the listener hears sound as opposed to just see an electric signal. So these two are completely separate things and do not confuse them. The received signal, message signal is what is sent initially to the message signal. message signal would be the pressure wave and the received and the transmitted signals demodulated would be um, the low electric signals of low frequency and modulated would be the electric signals of high frequency this com completes communication systems and your 12th class syllabus for physics thank you